Hello, I'm Brittany Mark. I'm a postgraduate industrial design student at Victoria University of Wellington in New Zealand. Um, I'd like to start off by saying thank you to uh, Victoria and also my supervisor, Tim Miller, um, and the MAID stream at the university. So the research that I'm presenting is a part of my master's thesis, which has been the last year and a half. Um, and it finishes in August, so this is the majority of uh, the research I've done. Um, the, primarily, I'm speaking about the translation of auxetic structure theory into tangible outputs made possible through um, geometric CAD modeling and then multi-material manufacturing. Um, so firstly, there's the translation process, which is the theory of auxetic structures um, into the realization of the manufacturing. Uh, the main way we are multi-material printing is with the Strauss's J750 printer. Um, the parametric design modeling is primarily through Rhino and Grasshopper. And then we use the materials that have been fabricated through to uh, um, perform a range of mechanical testing um, to implement kinetic auxetics, which is the 4D um, structures. Uh, on the right, you can see unit cells of a metachiral um, structure, which have gone through the mechanical testing. Um, and then finally, once the materials are um, structurally sound, they have been applied um, to specific geometries for customized um, scenarios. So the process that we go through is structure theory. Um, the structures were chosen based on a range of criteria, but primarily the ones that were chosen to be manufactured were biaxial and three-dimensional. Uh, then the mechanical design principles are translated through computational rhino and grasp, and then they are put through an optimization software to enable additive manufacturing, and then they are multi-material printed on the J750 um, and then mechanically tested and then applied. So you can see an example of the uh, re-entrant double arrow, which was the first testing um, that we went through the entire process. So there's the theory and then the grasshopper script, the Rhino model. And then you can see an FDM print uh, that was done with PLA. And then the three um, structures on the right with the hands, they are done multi-material printing so the hinge is made of an agilis rubber-like uh, material, and then the struts are a rigid Vero uh, Tango Plus, which is a rigid plastic. Uh, and then that's a render of what a structure looks like, um, three by three. So in terms of the multi-material printing, uh, we develop the structures through CAD and then at the end they are put through the GrabCAD which is the software that the Stratus is used to um, print the structures and then uh, the, you can see the J750 that's the main printer there. Um, the structures come out with a huge amount of support material on them. Uh, we try to reduce this through uh, material and design optimization but essentially the support material can come in two forms, um, water removable or soluble through um, a, ch a chemical bath. Um, so some of the structures are put through in a chemical bath, but obviously that um, then interferes with some of the elasticity properties. And so we're careful um, with what goes through the chemical bath and what is um, manually removed. All the structures on the right are manual removal and then they all are exhibiting the auxetic effect through the hinge design and the strut um, design as well. So the key part of the research is taking the auxetic structure theory and making it tangible and many of the obstacles come through the design considerations. So the way that it is printed as in, is it relaxed or engaged in the way it is put on the print bed? Uh, so we've, we've experimented with um, a range of relaxed to engaged states. Um, the short hardness, so you can see on the left, the second image is the range of materials that we have on the printer in the material agilis. So that's the rubber structure. So it goes from 20 to 80, um, and we can vary that in 10 by 10 degrees of increment and um, that 
increases or decreases the rub, rubber like of this um the rubber of the material and so that's the structure the he reentrant hexagonal structure um exhibiting auxetic through short hardness 20 40 60. Uh, then there's the hinge radius which is how large the hinge is, the scale of the hinge in regard to the scale of the structure, and then the strut width and profile. So some profiles have been printed circular and others have been printed square, and then the thickness of the strut um, up to a maximum where it's most structurally robust, but it still is exhibiting an auxetic effect. And then these structures are put through a range of mechanical testing. So the three images at the start are the planar hinges for a range of trial uh, reentrant and rotating rigid units, and then they are they are tested for their position, their maximum min height, um, the degrees of how far it articulates, and then. Um, after that, the material damage is recognized. So this is the metatrial compression twist. Um, and you can see there's a varying range of damage. Uh, the most damage we see is at the boundary of the agilis and the rigid tango material. Um, but also there is a certain amount of damage seen at the vertex. Uh, so we can design for that and increase the strut width and also the hinge radius to compensate for the weakness at the vertex, but also ensuring that we haven't created an elasticity that is so high that the model is acting rather as an elastic lattice and not as an auxetic open cell foam. Um, so this is the metachiral compression twist. We chose this primarily because it is biaxial and it is three-dimensional. Uh, so it can be multi-material printed and we can demonstrate a biaxial movement um, with a single unit. So a range of um, design parameters are have been experimented with and then selected. So the square, the profile, the shore hardness, and the scale, etc. And so you can see on the right the rhino and grasshopper CAD development. So primarily the structures are developed in rhino so that we can apply all of the mechanical restrictions to the unit cells. And then we use the grasshopper to generate the lattices um, so that they can increase the density and the scale of the um, open cell foams. And then once the structures are working, we then have kinetic auxetics. And so they are moving four dimensionally through the stimuli that we apply to it. Uh, so to decide the application uh, in New Zealand, we have ACC, which is an entire um, database of all sports injuries that the country experiences. And so we've compressed all of that data and um, identified that knee injuries in football and netball are our biggest um, areas for, the uh, biggest opportunity areas for um, applying auxetic structures, which can be um, four dimensional when they are impacted um, in a sports scenario. So the knee is, um, the scenario can actually be customized specifically to the anatomy of the individual. So if we decide that it's a knee injury, perhaps it's an ACL injury, we have the ability to um, scan a person's knee. And then you can see on the um, right, the um, render of the knee. So that's someone's knee and then we can take that model into the design software, um, put the structure that is best suited for that scenario. So for a knee injury, ACLs are primarily as a result of rotational impact. If we apply a metachiral twist um, structure that absorbs the rotational impact, and so it decreases the um, risk of ACL. Um, so this, the knee is in the design software. We develop a range of curvature to fit the knee 
or whichever part anatom anatomical part of the body um, we are targeting. And then the structure is then morphed to the surface through the grasshopper scripts. And we can start to experiment with how dense the units are as well as how dispersed they are, um, whether they are on synclastic curvature, which is obviously important for um, the body. We want the structure to be moving uh, all three in all three directions um, across the surface. And then we can apply this script to a range of scenarios um, once the structure is morphed. So obviously this is a work in progress and with the uh, COVID, it has been slowed down slightly um, in our ability to be on campus doing the manufacturing and stuff. But um, in the next couple of months, the structures will be finalized and morphed to the surface. And obviously um, parameters such as the um, density and whatnot will be um, potentially more controlled. Um, but that's that is how we implement um, the multi-material prints into applications. Um, so yeah, that is pretty much as far as we've gotten so far. Um, so thank you for listening and thank you again to Victoria University and Tim Miller, my supervisor as well.